Hi, I'm Tracy Leslie from Trinity United Methodist Church. Thanks for joining me today at uh, my neighborhood pond for a little fishing. So, um, full disclosure, I am really not much of a fisherman. Um, my dad was a big fisherman. Last week, my sermon was filmed in the kitchen. I was baking bread. That's a place I'm really at home. It feels very creative to me to cook and bake. Uh, fishing, I did a lot of it as a kid, and I found it really monotonous. I just didn't have enough patience for it. Uh, I did it a lot, though, because, as I say, my dad was an avid fisherman, and so fishing time at time with that, and I really enjoyed that and looked forward to that, so I spent a lot of time fishing. I also really wasn't very good at fishing. I remember on one occasion, it was an evening, after dinner, my dad and I had gone out fishing in a creek not very far from our house, and uh, we both cast, and I waited and waited and waited. Nothing was happening. And then finally, I got like a little bit of a tug on my pole, and uh, I reeled it in. I was so excited. It was a little crappy. I don't know if you're familiar with those fish. They're pretty common in the eastern U.S., and uh, they are very social fish. They uh, tend to always swim in schools, and so my dad, when he saw it, he was encouraging. He said, oh, there's going to be more of these. These fish swim in schools. So I cast again, and both of us, we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and nothing happened. And finally, little eight-year-old me turned to my dad and said, Daddy, I think my fish was cutting class. So I was pretty frustrated that evening, but uh, it couldn't possibly compare with the frustration experienced by Peter and his fellow disciples when we read the story recorded in John chapter 21. Um, in the weeks that immediately followed Easter, the church has historically, um, in those weeks, looked at gospel stories um, about the post-resurrection appearance of Jesus to his disciples. And the story that I'm about to share with you is one of those stories. As I say, it's from the Gospel of John, chapter 21. After these things, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of Jesus' disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, I'll go with you. They went out and got into a boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not recognize not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, do you? They called back, no. He said to them, cast the, the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to draw it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom, Peter, whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on his outer garments, for he had stripped down for work, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciple came in a boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish already on it.
as I've already mentioned, these gospel stories about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, they are stories meant to remind us that Jesus' death, his crucifixion, was not the end of the story. Jesus was resurrected. He appeared to his disciples, revealed himself to them. And so these stories should inspire us to think about how are the ways that Jesus is still present to his followers today? How does Jesus reveal himself to us today? Last week I mentioned the fact that because Jesus himself was broken, his body broken on the cross, subjected to the brokenness of this world, that we can trust. Fish for about a half a 
dozen disciples to eat for breakfast? That's way more than this meeting. You might also notice in the story that I shared from John 21 that Jesus also has bread for the disciples, bread and fish, which takes our memory back to John chapter 6 when Jesus fed the multitude. And that story with just five barley loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus multiplied them with so much abundance The gospel teaches us 
that God is with us even in our places of brokenness, failure, frustration, and that God is there with abundance. And so it is up to us. When we go to the store, will we take too much? We, we need to remember in this time that there are some among, some among us who don't have their own transportation, who can't just drive to the store anytime they want to. There are some among us who, when their checks run out at the end of the month, their cupboards are nearly bare. So when they go to the store, will they find empty shelves because we have taken far more than we needed, simply out of fear? Friends, God is abundant. We have nothing to fear. And so when blessings are laid out before us, the question is, will we grab them up as quickly and as much as we possibly can? Or, when blessings are laid out before us, will we recognize the presence of God?